Happy Whiskey Wednesday, everyone. I'm Robin, and this is Savor at Home number 79. For this tasting, I'm going to try something from High West Distillery. This is High Country. It's pretty unique because this is produced entirely at High West. So that means they actually distill it all themselves, mature it all themselves, and of course, bottle it. Um, High West is known for blending their distillate, their various distillates, with some MGP, mostly. They have been doing this forever and are very successful at it. But this is produced entirely by them, so pretty cool. So High Country is their American single malt, and American single malt does not have a legal definition. However, craft distilleries all over the country are pushing for TTB to actually make this a legal definition because they want to start making American single malt in a similar way to how the rest of the world makes single malts. So the American Single Malt Whiskey Commission was founded in 2016 by a bunch of these craft distilleries that are trying to push for American Single Malt as its own whiskey category. According to their website, they serve to establish, promote, and protect the category of American Single Malt Whiskey. And they define it as a whiskey that is fermented from 100% malted barley. It is distilled by one single distillery. It doesn't indicate whether or not it has to be pot distilled, unlike in Scotland, but it can't be distilled to more than 160 proof or 80% ABV. It has to be aged in oak casks that are less than or equal to 700 liters, which is huge. That's like 185 gallons or something like that. But here, distilleries can use both new and used casks, which is pretty unique for the US. There is no minimum age requirement yet, according to the website. And the whiskey has to be bottled at at least 40% ABV. And all of this must be done entirely in the US. So the high West, high country, American single malt does fall within that category. It uses 100% malted barley for the mash. It is pot distilled. High West has pot stills. And then it's aged for at least two years in both new and used casks. Um, this is 44% alcohol by volume, and I paid about $90 for it. MSRP is $80, but I have seen, at least in California, Drizzly market up to like 275, starting at 275. So yeah, um, hard to get your hands on, unless you live in Utah, I guess, but I was also in Utah and they were completely sold out of this. Anyways, when High Country was released in 2019, High West disclosed what malts actually went into the blend that's in the batch. One of these single malts came from a 100% peated Scottish malt mash. The second one came from a 100% two row light malt mash. And the third one was a combination of two row malt, crystal 60 and chocolate malt. So those were the three different mashes essentially used for the single malts that went into the blend. For the maturation, they use new charred oak as well as ex bourbon barrels, ex rye barrels and ex port barrels. Now I have the 2021 release. This is batch number 21J22. So this is the 2021 release. And I don't know exactly what went into the blend. However, it's said that there's some Oloroso finished single malts that went into this blend and that they also removed the use of the peated Scottish malt. So maybe there's some two row malt, some crystal malt, some chocolate malt that goes in here, but yeah. I don't know exactly. One unique thing that High West does for High Country is that they distill on grain. This is not traditional, so it's pretty noteworthy that they do that. 
Before I dive into the tasting, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and being the start of a neat community over on Patreon. And if you watching also want to join our community, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can join our Patreon. Let's dive in now. So there is a light copper color here. Uh, some might call it chestnut, others might call it russet, but yeah, I, I, I'd call this a light copper color. And right off the bat on the nose, I'm getting some sweet cereal grains. It's reminding me of Honey Nut Cheerios. There's a touch of maltiness that's also reminding me that this is not in fact Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> Lots of wildflower honey. It's a little dusty. There's some dried lavender, and there is some fruitiness. It's almost like dehydrated apples. And I'm getting a little bit of maple. So there is a touch of heat and the mouthfeel stays pretty thin. There's some fruitiness right off the bat. It's almost like figs and some applesauce, like the cinnamon applesauce. There's also some bitter chocolate and some espresso. The espresso is like if you used some light roasted beans that were more floral and caramel forward in their flavor profile because I'm getting a lot of floral and caramel notes along with that espresso as well. There's also some like wheatgrass and there's definitely some malted milk balls, but it's like the Easter egg shaped ones that you get on Easter. The finish is a little bit mulchy, um, along with some dried fruits. There's some prunes and maybe like a grape jelly. Overall, this is good. I'm a little bit disappointed in the mouthfeel um, and maybe the complexity of flavors. Um, the nose is really fun. Uh, is it worth $90 though? Is it worth $80? Maybe $80. Um, I view it more as supporting the American single malt category, which I am very excited about. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment below if you've tried High West High Country. Have you tried any of the previous batches from 2019 or 2020? I'd love to know. Um, and share this video with friends and make sure to subscribe. Okay, two row light malt, light malt mash. I love the noise of these bottles.